Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to another video on the Uber Eats clone. And I mean it's a long journey and we'll keep meeting each and every week to get to know what is happening with the Uber Eats clone app. What new things we are learning, okay? So in the last video we talked about and we bootstrapped a couple of uh, front-end applications and uh, those all are working. We were able to bootstrap and run the applications, okay? Now next thing we are going to start talking about is some of the backend services. Let's say the auth service because what we are going to do we are going to use the, the nest JS. Okay. Let me just make it look nicer. So what we are going to use we are going to use nest JS as a framework. So if uh, you are already familiar with the NestJS then it is very good because a lot of code we are going to write in the uh, NestJS TypeScript. All the services basically initially we are going to write them in the REST APIs. Okay, so if, if you want to just explore what is NestJS, it's uh, here is the documentation link and you can check my channel. There are thousands of the videos on the NestJS. I mean primarily a lot of content on NestJS. I will not talk about how NestJS works and all. So what we are going to do, we are going to put NestJS services. Okay. Let's say if I, if I first talk about simple is auth service. Okay. And this may be a proxy service which you want to build in Nest or Simple Express this proxy or whatever you can want to call proxy or the gateway this is not a graphql gateway or a simple or any aws gateway api gateway it is simple gateway we are going to write in the node.js so whenever the client is making a request they will have a centralized endpoint and from there they already know where our services are okay it can redirect these services this call to auth service i mean auth service would obviously will be a public because the user wants to log in so he wants to access the login api register apis and all but other services with where you are actually fetching the data let's say the search do you want to provide a login for the search no right because anybody can come to this platform and can start looking for the food menu items provided by different restaurants so these are actually a public auth service will also be a public so here on the gateway we need to decide okay this request api v1 auth or let's say i will create a particular route which is is if the request is coming for let's say api v1 auth okay this is public domain let's allow it api v1 and this is coming for search it's a public domain let's allow it but when you say api v1 when the restaurant where restaurant admin wants to add update something obviously you need a login authentication in place right so these are the public apis but this is a private api or protected api it requires a authentication and once you're authenticated from the client side you need to send authorization header so what happens is okay this is the front end app let's say i'm talking about uh, next js application which has a simple login page you did the login and login will go to the gateway to the auth service you just hit api v1 auth right what will happen is we are not using any federated uh, authentication provider like uh, we can use many services are available like aws cognito if you are using aws we can use auth auth0 which is using auth protocol auth0 can manage all of your users or open id connect there are or you can actually use uh, multiple services or what happens uh, social providers also you can integrate login with google login with the linkedin login with the twitter or login with the mobile number right i mean these all options should be available mobile number is uh, let's skip this for now here we are providing the option to google
similarly facebook and twitter so here you are not using any external service you are still writing auth service but in auth service you are saying is you have configured uh, an api to accept the login coming from google so what happens is when you click on login it will take you to the first the google console it is also using auth auth 2.0 protocol so this is a ui your ui screen right from the ui screen if you are clicking on to login with google what will happen because what you have done already is you have created an application on the google developer console or twitter console or facebook developer console you have already created an application okay that application credential you have configured in your node.js code because what will happen is it is still going to hit your api routes i will talk about this in the detail api v1 let's say some auth this is a api route which has been written in node.js and that api route knows how to react when the user is asking for auth google let's say it will take you to the google login screen so this you from ui you will hit this api route it will take you to the google login and there google will ask you for the consent okay do you want to log in with your google account to this application and when you say yes then what we'll do is google will share the data with me my node.js app i mean you might have heard about using passport google authentication passport twitter passport linkedin passport is actually a module which is available similarly same flavor is available in the nest yes google login uh, and you said okay i wanted to share this data and I, user has given a consent end user who is trying to log in then google will send a callback to our node.js app with authentication token if you are doing a first time registration you can actually save the user data send the token or if you are just if he is just doing a login you just synchronize the data and allow user to log in now user has been redirected because this node.js app will redirect you to the front end route your next js front end route now that will say okay i am on the api v1 uh, this will be some front end route which is callback and there you will get the data or maybe auth success or some kind of a route you will create and you got the token you your session has been initialized by node.js app and session is nothing but you have received a token this is powerful thing which you need to tell the world that you are logged in right this is how it works i mean all the social providers which you see on different applications what happens is they, they, they redirect you first they create a google app on developer consoles and then they configure that do google app credentials to your node.js app using some passport module then ui you will send a route your node.js will see okay this is the google authentication send it to the google api v1 google auth and then on there you will give a consent and google will, will redirect it to your own api route there you will receive the token and send the synchronize the data and send the data back to the front end on the front end route but this is very simple to set up because now we have uh, these separate modules passport authentication modules and these are strategies in next uh, google auth strategies and all but if you just want to use the oauth or auth0 oauth is a protocol and auth0 is a vendor you might have heard about it auth0 right in auth0 also it works in the same way this is the authentication provider and you can plug in play a lot of things here okay so let's stick to only first uh, username password and if you don't want to provide anything you just do a simple login which is username password right this is simple i don't want i don't have a google account or anything i just want to log in with this register first sign up and then just do the login right so these all different things our auth service should be able to handle right and once you do the login you get the token or token will be forwarded in the authorization headers 
like like http headers in the get put post proxy gateway will validate the token now i mean we we are thinking about what is the use of this proxy gateway a lot of things it is doing you can consider that as an api gateway but api gateway do tons of things we are just creating a minimal miniature version of it which will validate the authorization header that is valid it has a valid user encoded in it and it's not expired then it will say okay go and start talking to this auth service uh, whatever the protected service we have order service card service checkout service let's say order service we have so it will go to order service and it will hit and it will user is already authorized authenticated and authorized there may be a roles also okay only this uh, restaurant management services should be able to access accessible by only restaurant admins because there can be a rule rule end user super admin end user is i'm buying the food restaurant admins who can access the restaurant set of apis because a simple user should not be allowed to access the restaurant apis to fetch the restaurant data update the menu items and all right so there can be a role based authorization also we can add here okay if you are end user or any user you can do the login and search if you are a restaurant admin then only you can actually access the restaurant api it's a restaurant service okay we need to isolate these things based on the domain that uh, a restaurant manager should be able to manage the restaurant food menu its own domain and its own space okay when we move from this to some other version of uh, using the aws lambdas serverless gateways and all then picture will be a little different but now let's talk about this service this is important how we are going to build this right we know that uh, what is the nest js and all let's say talk about database also we can use postgres and here we are going to use the nest js most popular modules like type orm we can use these are specific modules which are designed to talk to database to do a particular things this type forum will do integrate or help us to talk to the postgres database by exposing the entities and all and rest in nsjs you will write uh, services providers modules uh, some common modules i can name it uh, like you will just write a logger some auth module logger module auth module and api domain module where you will write uh, apis and domain modules will have here also type orm this will be actually a part of db module and config module which will inject the configurations in nsjs swagger modules and oh okay the, those are like internals internal systems of nsjs like you expose the api spec which is exposing the rest interface you are using the type rm module to talk to the postgres database uh, which is accessing the different entities okay for token generation you are using json web token jwt sign verify for social authentication you are using the google uh, google strategy with uh, passport all these modules you will be using right so choosing a database is simple i mean what do we need we uh, this application is going to have thousands of the users and uh, we just need to register and log in there is no much operation we are going to do we are not going to do a bulk read and all these things so minimal setup of postgres is fine you can also use a NoSQL database if you think that it's going to be dynamic and unstructured but i think the authentication is properly structured where you have a user table you can also track the the user activity who is getting user user is getting login log out all the different activities and you can just generate the proper logs and show it the outputs okay so user will log in you generate the token then user is coming back and then you will validate 
so authentication service can also be built in different ways so you you think about this access token but what happens if the access token gets expired there is a mechanism in which you can always return a refresh token also with the access token so once the token is expired front end will know because token has expired and back end will tell you okay your token has expired in that case the front end will send a refresh token and can request a new token because front end still has the refresh token that means that user is was a valid user who was earlier logs in but the token has expired so it is sending me the refresh token and in, in the exchange of that i can give the user the front end the new refresh new access token so we will see how we can manage that in the user table the access token refresh token the expiry and the user credentials the user role that all will be the part of uh, the auth service okay there will be well defined set of uh, roles we are going to put and once you send a token back to the user we will encode some information like email a unique username maybe a mobile number and a role so if front end decodes that information front end will also be happy okay that it has that much information now if front end is interested they can call api v1 auth users and id and get the whole profile of a user okay so let's do this we will start building the auth service in the next js we can also by baseline some of the services which we are going to do with the next js you can run the few set of commands next js cli next new project team it's a boilerplate project then you will start adding things um like you will start adding the modules the core modules uh, shared modules the domain modules controllers and your entities whatever the tables you wanted to use let's make this auth service is very powerful service so that it can it should be able to do a lot of things let's take a look in the next video for that